What's going on? It's Ed here from ClicksGeek, and today we're going to talk about our process A to Z for uh, how we sell and then build and manage Google Ad Campaigns. So I'm going to take a few minutes and just walk through an entire cycle of how this stuff works for us. So let's say uh, we sent out a piece of direct mail to a niche audience and we generated some leads. Um, and if you need help with um, uh, what you should have in your direct mail or how to do all that stuff, we've got a direct mail course. Check that out. I'll put links below. Well, let's say we, we mail it out. We get on the phone with somebody and uh, let's say it is a junk removal business. Um, we're going to have a conversation um, and I'm going to find out if they're currently running Google Ads or if they're not and they're brand new to it. If they're currently running Google Ads, we're going to talk about their campaign. We're going to talk about their stats. We're going to talk about their click-through rate. We're going to talk about their conversion rate. We're going to talk about their cost per lead. And in some instances, I'm going to be able to do an audit right then and there on the phone just based on the data they're telling me because I'll know things are off. Or we'll go into a situation where we'll actually audit the campaign itself. So what we'll do is a two-step sale there. We'll figure out, um, we'll diagnose what's going wrong with the campaign and what's going right. And then we'll make uh, our uh, advisements on what they should be doing with the campaign to fix it. And then we'd come back to the call and then we'd close them. That's if they're running a Google Ads campaign. Um, we can do all of that in a live audit over the phone. A lot of times I don't even need to see the campaigns. Just based on the data they're telling me, I can tell them the issues that they're already having, especially if they're hands-on with the Google Ads campaign right now and they know their stuff. So um, the other route is, let's say they are not running a Google Ads campaign. So I'm going to walk through what Google Ads is, how it works briefly, very 30,000 foot overview. I'm going to talk about why they'd want to work with us. We talk about where they're currently at as a business, um, you know, where where their goals or where they want to be goal wise, you know, a year from now and, and see what that gap is. And can Google Ad, Ads fill that gap uh, or is Facebook Ads a better option or is SEO a better option? Because Google Ads isn't always the best option for somebody. And I want you to keep that in mind. So um, those would be the two paths. So let's say we close the client. Um, next thing I'm doing is I'm going to send them an onboarding email. In that onboarding email would be the payment link and the questionnaire. In the questionnaire, I'm asking stuff like their Google Ad customer ID number, their email address for reporting, their email address to set up a CallRail sub-account so they can have a, a uh, repository of all their call and, and uh, all the call recordings, um, an email address to send form submissions to, the geo-targeting, the ad budget, the ad schedule, real simple stuff that I've covered in depth on this channel before in the onboarding process. Um, the whole onboarding email will take them approximately five minutes to put together unless they've got to start a brand new account from scratch. And if that's the case, um, I can send them a link on how to set that up or I can always just hop on a call with them and walk them through the steps on how to create that account. Um, I've done it so many times now I don't necessarily even need to see what they're doing. They just read it to me and I can tell them do this, do this, do this. Um, and then um, we've now received the onboard email. Um, I've taken their customer ID number. I've added that to our MCC account. Um, that spits out a request to them. I'll also shoot that, them an email saying, um, I've just requested access into your account. Follow these steps and grant us access. Please confirm once complete. Once we have access, um, I go by, let's say it's abcjunk.com. I go by abcjunk.co. That's where we're going to put the landing page. Um, and if you don't know why we do that, go watch the video I did yesterday and it's going to cover why we do that, uh, the landing page on the .co versus their main website. Once I got that and the onboard information, I, I, over, I look over it real quick or a team member looks over it real quick. We send that over to the development side of the business or operations and um, from them, our developer tees up uh, the landing page, gets, gets it onto the domain itself. That goes over the landing page build or the clone department, if you will, because we, we were in a lot of the niches we're in, we replicate things. Um, and we put up the landing page. A, our copywriter will go through and just basically revise it for that local market, upload their logo, some testimonials, things like that, their imagery, so that it's customized for them. Then it goes to landing, uh, rather campaign clone and build. If it's an issue we've been in, again, we're gonna clone a campaign, move it into their account, and then re-edit it specific for them. So we'll change out geo-modified ad groups, we'll change out the ad budget, the ad schedule, um, geo-targeting, things, like things like that, the landing page URL, obviously, as well. Um, but the beauty of being in the same niche or in a handful of niches a lot of times is you can clone your process over and over again. So our landing pages were cloning, um, our campaigns were cloning, and that saves a tremendous amount of time. You can compress time and increase speed when you do that. Um, 
once let's say now the campaign is all built um we are let me back up actually let's say you're not in in a uh not in a niche before you're going to go through the keyword research phase you're going to look for the bottom of the funnel keywords you're going to look for stuff like con um, painting contractor near me uh interior painting uh painting contractor things like that as opposed to what sh what color should i paint my living room those are the broad match keywords you want to avoid that kind of stuff go with your exact phrase which would be more bottom of the funnel type keywords Think of what you would be typing in if you were looking for a painter in that market as an example. Okay, so now let's assume the campaign is built. We take um, an email, send it off to the client, let them know that the campaign is ready to go. Here's the landing page. Let them know that we'll have received an e email invitation from CallRail, um, inviting them to create a sub-account for free. Um, once that email is collected or once they've accepted it and created a password, they give us the, um, the go-ahead and let us know it's done. We add that back into the system, and that allows uh, them to have access to all the call recordings within uh, CallRail. Um, they'll review the landing page. Maybe they'll have an editor or two. Most of the time they don't, and they tell us to turn the campaign on. Campaign goes on. Now, you don't really want to be doing it much in that first week, right? You want to be in the data collection mode. You want to be analyzing, you know, do you want to see how many impressions you're going to be getting? You're going to be looking at how many impressions you're getting compared to the budget and click cost, you know, going back to the Google Ads um, golden ratio. If you haven't watched that video, check that out because that's going to be instrumental on how fast a campaign can get velocity. Um, and sometimes when you start a new campaign, you've got your, uh, your Google bid strategy learning phase. So depending on which of the strat bid strategies you use, it may take up to five days for that thing to actually really kick in. And um, sometimes it may seem like nothing's happening. It's Google in the background learning. That's their AI doing doing their thing uh, before it really ramps up. Um, and then after that, let's say for us, we do optimizations every Friday for our clients. Um, you go through the optimizations. We're looking at um, which of the ad groups are getting traffic, which of the ads are getting traffic. Uh, we're making split test changes on, on ads. We're making bid adjustments. We're adding negative keywords into the campaign. We're looking at probably not device adjustments at this point because there's not likely enough data going through the campaign unless they have a bigger budget or really low click cost and they've got a lot of data, a lot of conversions. Um, but that's usually typically later on in the month, um, if not into the second month. Um, and then if you want, we've got tons of videos on optimizations, things we do to optimize a campaign. What I would recommend is go through those and you can see stuff we do uh, weekly, monthly, bi-weekly, quarterly, stuff like that. And you'll get a sense of what we do to optimize. Um, and then other thing we do is we send uh, client reports Monday mornings. So clients will get an automated report that goes out, and it's a benchmark report that does, does week over week, comparing stats, showing trends in the campaign. And then they'll also get a monthly recap report as well. That is A to Z on start to finish from lead generation all the way to um, a live campaign in motion. Um, and then everything we're doing in the optimization phase is to um, increase conversion rate, getting a lower cost per lead, and increasing the volume of leads. That's what we're after. Conversion rate's the metric we want um, the most attention on. Click-through rate, yes, uh, but conversion rate more so. Because um, click-through rate, is, while it's very important, um, there are some other factors that play into why you may have a lower conversion rate. Uh, I'm sorry, lower click-through rate than, than not. Let's say you've got some broad match keywords in the, uh, in the campaign that's going to lead to a lower click-through rate as opposed to like an exact and phrase. So just there's some nuance in there. But um, that's it. That's A to Z. Um, it's not a wildly complex um, process. Um, so if you're thinking about getting into this, it's not it's not overly difficult. Um, you are going to learn. You're going to have a lot to learn. Um, our channel's got almost 550 videos, so you can dive deep into how all this stuff works. We've got a Google Ad landing page course that teaches you how to build these landing pages. We've got a Google Ads training academy, which walks through how to uh, build and manage successful campaigns. We've got a direct mail course, which teaches you how to get clients using this stuff or how to generate leads to get clients. Um, and then we've got an agency course coming out here in a few weeks. Um, but yeah, so I hope this helps. This is a quick A to Z. People always ask about the process. It's, uh, it's way simpler than people think. It's not overly complex. Um, there are a number of steps to it. Um, we have it all documented, but it's not its not as crazy as people seem to think it is, um, especially if you're in a niche. Go get a client in that same niche again and then again and again because then you can start replicating your efforts and it makes your life even easier. 
Um, it gets easier to sell the stuff. It gets easier in the build-out process. It gets even easier in the optimization process. So um, niches are good, or niches are good, however you guys want to say it. So what I'll do is I'll drop some links below um, to our courses and to our services. Uh, we specialize in lead gen for local business. We're a Google Ad Premier Partner. Um, my name's Ed. I'm one of the founders here at ClickSkeek. If you need anything, just hit us up in the links below. Have a great day. Bye.